Friends from Radio from the London Film Festival. I'm Angela Cherby. I'm here with Jared Johnson and Calvin Clerkin, respectively director and actor of Muscle. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. There's a lot of fuss around your movie. Everybody's talking about Muscle. And uh, which I don't know if it's for you, if it's a good thing or a bad thing, because the things that I heard are, were good, so it's basically a, a good thing. And the, the film is a thriller. Uh, about this man who decided to change his life and go into a gym. And from that moment on, his life is completely slowly but steadily changed by the people he met. This, this is like to be, to be short. Um, Jared, how you come up with this film? Why did you do this film? This is a big, big, big question. The big question is why, yeah, why, <laughs> why, why did I do this? Asking yourself. No, um, I first had the idea probably in about 2002. Um, sorry, I've got a bit of a cold. It's probably yeah. I'm, I'm a bit blocked up. Um, 2002, just from spending a lot of years going to gyms and seeing different characters in gyms, you know, and also the fact that there's never really been a film about gym culture that's been made about that relationship between, you know, M men in the gym uh, you've got Pumping Iron which is a documentary but other than that so I was interested in, in like these different types of men in gyms <laughs> and there was, there was two in particular that I remembered, one that was very aggressive that would sort of shout at people if they were like over the other side of a gym shout at people if they were lifting weights the wrong way or, and he was terrifying and it was <laughs> I was like, he's dead. That's that's a film there, you know, and that was sort of the original idea, and just of, of someone who becomes a pers someone's personal trainer, who takes over his life. Uh, why did you choose the thriller as a genre to tell the story? Um, it's a tricky one. It's not. I mean, it, it, if you see the film, it's yeah. it's it is. There are thriller elements, but there are also black comedy elements. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to describe it as a as a comedy because I don't want people expecting Will Ferrell to. to <laughs> uh, jump out with funny clothes on or you know I don't but it is it's funny um, it, darkly humorous and there are also thriller elements like all my films um, but you know you have to I, I, I like the tag thriller because it's it, it does do that yes, but it, it that, but it but it also does other stuff mm. What what do you think about this? Our society now that is so focused on muscles and on masculinity, and on not um, on on a certain description and perception of masculinity. Whatever, wh whoever wants to answer. Give me, what are you giving me on the hard questions? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I guess what was interesting about this the the film and that. Um, aspect was that we, we start the film with Simon selling dreams in a sense. He's selling it to sort of um, housewives and he actually gets sucked into the same, um, what would you call it, the same sales pitch. I mean, it, really what he wants is he, he, yeah, he feels that like being big or having a sort of better physique or, or maybe looking more macho or masculine is going to sort of get him, bring him happiness. And I, I think that um, in this day and age where we live in that sort of Instagram world where yeah, people are getting filters on their chests, you know what I mean? And, and just this sort of, this idea of um, just being big or being beautiful, th that, that is going to bring some, some sort of, um, you know, inner happiness. It's, I guess it's what we're what part of the film is is playing with. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. And I think that um, yeah, with Instagram and stuff like that, it's really exploded, isn't it? Um, yes, it is. And but but it's the the thing is that uh, we are uh, using our body to show off, and we are suffering for this showing off because you know, being forced to show off creates <coughs> this kind of loop where you have to be always better than what you are and be m better considered and so on and so on. And probably the character, I mean, the lead character in, in the film is going through the same motion because he's been now, the, if I can say so, used by this other guy that, that wants to help him out, but instead he's 
sneak into his yeah. life. And he's torn because he's he's getting bigger, but this guy's quite horrible to him. But at the same time, he's seeing improvements in his body, so it's it's like oh, and he paid up front to, to be <laughs> yeah. a member of the gym, so it feels. No, but it's like yeah, feeding the carrot to the donkey. Yeah. You know, there's that. But you're getting bigger. You're getting bigger all the time. But it's funny when I first had the idea. I'm not saying that it wasn't gym culture didn't it existed. Of course it did, but. I would say in the last 10, 15 years, it's exploded. Oh, yeah. and, and just that, just which, which when I first wrote a treatment, which has changed, is the expertise that everyone has about nutrition now. Everyone knows mm. about fats, good fats, mm. carbs. You, you know, and even 15 years ago, people were still a little bit, what, what is, what's carbs? You know, so everyone's got so body conscious, so body aware. Um, I mean, you know, who doesn't go to the gym and... It's it's it has exploded, but this is almost um, tapping into that old, you know, the old school method of where you don't really know too much about the nutrition. Mm. It's like just eat loads of steak and lift heavy weights. Yeah, yeah. there was a real with a character Simon's. There's a real uh, naivety about it. I mean, he really is going in blindfolded. He doesn't really know what to expect, mm. and and, um, and um, that's why he gets sort of hooked up in, in some respects. I think he's really looking for someone to come and save him in that sense. And yeah. and this, I mean, his but this body transformation entails like an, an interior transformation as as a personality too. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And well, well the, one, the, the good thing about it for me was that I'd never really done anything at the gym before. I'd never I'd never lifted weights before. I'd done some running in the past, but. Um, so going in to do that, I had a trainer that uh, took me on for about 12 weeks. And it was really great for me because I was entering the gym in the same way as my character was entering the gym, which was literally knowing nothing about it. So I had to, I had 12 weeks of, yeah, getting bigger and, and eating more and stuff like that. But also I had 12 weeks of like psychologically going through very similar, um, you know, um, thoughts and and upset and you know that the, the, the character would have gone through as well which was just invaluable really and if you see the film you'll see that pretty much there's two different actors in the first block that there's a different actor in the second block mm. just from the movie if you look at the, how Cav lifts the weights in the first block <laughs> to how he's walking around the gym in the second you know like he owns the gym in the second yeah. where the first one he's like what do I do here and it was it's, it's, it, there's, a, there's a point in the film where it's just the transformation happens. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why it was vital for us to have that period where we shut down production and we just kind of went off with the trainer and just worked solidly. I think the eating was probably the oh, worst. Oh, the eating, yeah, the worst. I actually really enjoyed the gym side of it and I'm, I'm still keeping that up a little bit now. But the food, <laughs> I mean, it's just <laughs> constant. It was literally steak and gnocchi. Um, and, the, and, and and this gives you the, the idea of how obsessive this thing yeah. is. You know, for those people, they do, they kind of live without uh, this and outside that world. That world is the only world they have. Well, you have to plan everything around your food. You have to plan everything around your gym. You have to plan everything around your nutrition. And it is an absolute nightmare. <laughs> I mean, it really is, isn't it? I mean... I'm eating seven times a day. Are you, are you still friends now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After you've been through all this, yeah, you're eating. Yeah, well, that's no, the thing no. we were worried about was, you know, obviously he's, he's, he's bit just that he didn't get injured because any we couldn't, mm. we had this three-month break and we couldn't move that section anymore. So we were like, as much as he needed to get bigger, he also needed to do it as safely yeah, as possible because safe. any sort of injury that was, you know, that was it. We were screwed. So it was an experiment to see if we could pull it off, to see if he could change shape, and we pulled it off. So it was, um, it was great. But in your experience of Jim Gore and of uh, the film, film director and writer, do you think that this is on, uh, a, a man thing? This kind of obsessive uh, cure for your body, g growing up, being bigger and bigger, or is something only, it's only testosterone driven or can also be... Testosterone has a big effect on it. Um, yeah, it does. I, I also think it's something that you can see, you can see the results, right? So if you see the results and then you, and you're with someone else in the gym and there's a little shorthand, do you know what I mean? That you can go like, oh, there's an instant satisfaction. 
satisfaction. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, great. And, and um, you know, for it turns a, into an addiction. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Quite easily, yeah. quite easily, quite easily could, like, definitely. Yeah, because actually you can meet people, men, that, that go through that, they cannot stop. They just become huge and huge and huge. They don't know when to stop. Well, but it won't, like I say, if you if you do get into it and then you do get your routines, then you, your routines are everything. Do you know what I mean? And you start that, mm. you know, all of a sudden you you're shifting everything to make that work. You know what I mean? So, could quite easily. Uh, it's it's it. it's kind of it's interesting. It's fascinating. It's also kind of scary, isn't it? Not to be able to be own your own life anymore because your life is owned by the amount of weight you can lift or mm. stuff like that. Well, we definitely do know people that are pretty obsessed by it, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think there's a there's a line. Yeah, you can you you can go to the gym as often as, as you can, you know. But there's also a point where you that's your little gym moment, you know, and you do your stuff and you get it out of the way, and then you get on with other stuff rather than it it you know it's the total focus twenty four seven, which is tiring. But is that better than you know, smoking heroin. Why, no, why, why? If you put it that way, maybe it's it's better actually. <laughs> but there would be some. In, there could be some in between. You know. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. At least you. You know. At least you got a six pack. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. At the end of the day, you get six pack instead of being a drug addict. Well, drug addict, which is get a six pack <laughs> even quicker to make honest. Well, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks a lot to <clears throat> to Jared Johnson and Kevin Clerkin from the Film Muscle from the London Film Festival. I'm Angela Cherby from Fred Film Radio, the Festival Insider.